Anna Kappa has the potential to be a real jewel in the Channel Island chain. We have one limiting factor, it's the presence of rats. Rats can just rip through these seabird colonies and just cause huge declines in numbers of seabirds. And the seabirds have no place else to go to breed. The Xanthus merlet is an animal that's critically endangered. We had to take drastic steps to bring this animal back so that the future generations can see them and appreciate them. Anacapa Island, one of the Channel Islands just 12 miles off the coast of Southern California. The word Anacapa comes from the Chumash Indian tribe, meaning mirage. Perhaps this refers to Anacapa's considerable flora and fauna, which are not readily apparent until you walk on the island's landscape. Comprised of three islets known as East, Middle and West, Anacapa's steep cliffs, vegetated terrain and protected beaches provide safe haven to a variety of marine mammals and seabirds. Anacapa hosts the largest breeding colony in the United States of the endangered California brown pelican. The island also supports western gulls, cormorants, and several species of raptors. Anacapa is managed by the National Park Service and lies within a designated marine sanctuary. Channel Islands National Park was set aside to protect those unique natural resources, species that occur nowhere else in the world besides on the Channel Islands. You go out to Anacapa Island and you're really in a world apart um, where you see um, seabirds and marine mammals and just a, a wilderness experience that you can't find here on the mainland any longer. So we're trying to protect that for future generations. Protecting the Channel Islands includes keeping the breeding areas free of ground-based predators commonly found on the mainland. Over the last few decades, researchers have noticed a decline in the population of some species of seabirds. One of the primary reasons, predation by the non-native black rat. Eileen Creel has been monitoring rat activity on Anacapa for the last year. This is a metal band that the Park Service uses, and they put them on all chicks in their grid. And this was found outside of the rat burrow. So more than likely the rat um, killed the chick and brought back pieces of the chick, including um, the leg that had this metal band on it, to its burrow. Rats are very enterprising in their search for food, eating anything they can to stay alive, from seabird eggs and mollusks during the spring and summer to the roots of perennial grasses during the lean winter months. In this infrared footage, a rat is seen attacking decoy eggs placed in a nesting site on Anacapa's middle island. The decoys are similar in size and appearance to native seabird eggs. This is the black rat or the ship rat. We caught him in a, in a building here on the island, which is an unusual place because there's no food in these buildings. After feeding on a summer of seabirds and eggs, he's uh, now looking, looking for more food. There's no more seabirds on the island, so now he's looking far and wide for some of the food that he's used to. One seabird the rat preys on is the Xanthus merlet, a rare nocturnal seabird that breeds in the Channel Islands. Estimates indicate that there are between 1,000 to 3,000 breeding pairs of Xanthus merlets remaining in the United States, with several hundred of them nesting in the cliffs and caves of Anacapa. Bird. There's a little hatch. It is presently being considered for endangered species status. 
Harry Carter, Daryl Whitworth and their team have been researching Xantooth merlets in the Channel Islands for several years. Well, this is an egg that's been eaten by a rat that we found in one of the sea caves at Anacapa Island. You can see the serrated edge with big, big bite marks where the rats come along and chomped it. There had been a, a half-developed embryo or something, there'd be blood on the inside of the egg. But this one was really fresh, and the rat got it right after it was laid, so. And so we know that the merlets are here. We just need to get them nesting to their potential here, which they're not. You know, they, they might try to nest here, and that's what I think all these birds at nighttime indicate is there are birds here trying to nest. They just, they can't do it because of the rats. Given this threat to Xanthus merlets and other seabird populations, such as the ashy storm petrel, another rare nocturnal seabird that is being considered for endangered status, the Park Service started investigating the possibility of eradicating the rats from Anacapa. Right now, there's only a couple hundred nesting Xanthus merlets on Anacapa Island. There probably should be at least 3,000, maybe more, which would more than double the population that's currently existing in the United States. So it's an action that we can take. It's an action that's gonna have long-term and positive conservation benefits for Anacapa Island and the entire marine ecosystem. After extensive deliberation, several government agencies combined forces to rid Anacapa of the black rat using restoration settlement funds from the 1990 American Trader oil spill in Huntington Beach, the largest oil spill in Southern California in the last few decades. Well, a large number of seabirds were impacted by the American Trader oil spill. Uh, the trustees estimate that over 3,000 uh, birds were killed and approximately over 9,000 chicks were not born as a result of the spill. Birds that were injured by the American Trader oil spill were the Xanthus merlet, the ashy storm petrel, brown pelicans, and uh, western grebes. The directive of the American Trader Trustee Council that manages the settlement funds was to restore habitat of the seabird populations impacted by the oil spill. I guess first we decided, we being the trustees, that manage those resources, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, NOAA, and California Department of Fish and Game, that we would look at um, seabird habitat for those species that might have been in the Huntington Beach area. Perfect. And the Park Service had a wonderful opportunity here on Anacapa Island where Xanthus merlets do breed, but where Xanthus merlets are compromised by the presence of this non-native species, this black rat on Anacapa Island. They had the funding where they could do something good for restoration of seabirds, and they were looking for well-thought-out projects. They also funded a lot of the ecological monitoring that would really help us understand what are the impacts of rats on islands and what are the benefits from eradicating rats. Seabirds can only nest on islands, and that's why seabirds are on islands. And so if we can remove the rats, we can essentially bring back a, a resource that's been there for tens of thousands of years and, and, and make it whole again and allow the seabirds to once again use that site successfully. The invasion of non-native rats is not unique to Anacapa. Rats are found on roughly 80% of the world's islands from the sub-Antarctic to the northern waters of Canada. Here at Kiska Island in Alaska, researchers have found adult arklets with their brain cases missing, consumed by rats as they incubate their eggs because their arklets will not abandon their young. In New Zealand, rats have been implicated in the decreasing numbers of several species of island nesting birds. In this infrared footage, researchers document a rat fighting with a kiwi to flush her from her nest so that it can eat her chick. Throughout the world, the invasion of non-native mammals, particularly on islands, has caused widespread destruction. In some cases, causing extinctions of both plants and animals. Many scientists consider this one of the most pressing concerns for saving endangered species. The most serious problems have, have historically been on islands, where uh, the species on islands uh, evolved in the absence of, of, of most carnivores, for example, uh, most natural enemies, with very few competitors. So they're, 
over the thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of years that they, they've evolved on islands, they lost a lot of their intrinsic defenses. When you um, look at island ecosystems, you know, as the, as the name implies, it's a system. And if you have even one species that's eliminated, you know, within that system, it's going to affect the whole system. You know, even one species, let alone several species, let alone, say, all seabird species. You know, that ecosystem is altered forever. No one knows for sure how the rats got onto Anacapa, although some think it was from a gold rush steamer that ran aground. What we believe happened is that rats uh, got to the island initially when the Winfield Scott went aground uh, along uh, the north shore of middle Anacapa Island uh, in, the 18, in the late 1800s. And it was that shipwreck uh, that was the primary source of rats that had initially colonized the uh, Anacapa Island. But given that a single pair of rats can theoretically produce over 5,000 offspring in just one year, it was clear that eradicating them would be a significant challenge. A challenge taken up by the Island Conservation and Ecology Group, a non-profit environmental organization dedicated to conserving biodiversity on islands through the removal of non-native species. Rats alone are responsible for about half of all bird and reptile extinctions. I think 40 to 60 percent of bird and reptile extinctions were caused by introduced rats on islands. So it's this huge problem. The eradication of rats from islands is not new. It's been carried out on about 75 plus islands worldwide. And it's been carried out successfully since about 1986. The trick though is to get every last rat and to make sure that you get every last rat. What's new about Anacapa is uh, being able to remove the rats on such a topographically difficult island to work on because of the steep and ruggedness of the island. So there's a few holes. Given the difficult terrain and the need for 100% extermination, the team decided to apply a specially formulated rodenticide via helicopter. Starting with the eastern islet the first year, and then the Middle and Western Islets the following year. The Anacapa Island Restoration Project is the first time that an aerial broadcast of rodenticide has been done in, in North America. And it was not your typical restoration project, so it required all the agencies involved to do their homework and to really consider all the impacts and all the variables that could influence the success of the project. One of the primary concerns was how to minimize the impact of the rodenticide on the island ecosystem. The team has taken careful steps to evaluate and preserve the native island species during the eradication. Holly Gellerman has spent two years monitoring the native deer mice on the island. 18.5. We want to know what, how the mice are functioning as a population before the bait drop. and because we're expecting a decline, because they'll be affected by the same bait as the rats are if in the short term. And then afterwards, we'll continue monitoring and just to make sure that they're back to normal and back to what we expected. As insurance, native mice are held in a protected shed until the rodenticide application is finished. The mice will then be released in the spring after the bait is no longer effective and they can forage for themselves to help re-establish their population levels. Also at risk are the island's birds of prey that feed on rodents. To address this concern, the raptors are captured and removed both before and immediately after the application of the bait. We're attempting to capture all the, all the birds of prey, especially the species of special concern, and the ones that are most likely to uh, feed on carrion uh, that has, uh, has some of the poison bait in it. Brian and his team spend several weeks capturing birds of prey, occasionally using a great horned owl to flush them out. So far we've caught three birds, uh, two peregrine falcons and one red-tailed hawk. And there's still one peregrine, uh, three red-tailed hawks, and a couple of burrowing owls and two barn owls that we know of. So we're inventorying as we're trapping and uh, trying to get all the birds uh, accounted for. Other precautions include monitoring the endangered California brown pelicans, which marine ecologist Frank Gress has been researching for the past 25 years. Brown pelicans eat almost exclusively, 100%, anchovy and sardines. There's no way they're gonna be picking up a rat or anything else. 
the possible effects of the helicopter drop and just human activity and lots of people out there, that kind of concerned me. But again, as far as pelicans or cormorants, that's not that much of a concern because of the time of year. The team also had to make sure that the bait would not adversely impact the marine environment. Yeah, we were quite concerned about the potential negative impacts in the marine ecosystem. We first started to look at what the potential effects could be. Uh, we, we conducted some research uh, presenting uh, non-toxic bait to fish to see if fish would be interested in our bait. Uh, they were not interested in any of the bait that we presented, uh, thus eliminating them potentially moving the, the chemical into the food chain. Despite all the preparation and the support of many environmental organizations, including the National Audubon Society and American Bird Conservancy, the project was not without controversy, particularly from animal rights activists. Animal rights people are very concerned, and rightfully so, with suffering of individuals. But when these animals are let loose on nature, then uh, we have this conflict between the rights of the individual rat to go around eating eggs of s nesting seabirds, for example, or the right of the seabirds to exist, to persist in nature at all. The rats aren't in any danger. Rats are all over the world, but seabirds only nest on a few islands. And if we eliminate those places, then uh, all the generations of that species in the future will be gone. To some people it might seem kind of extreme, but rats are everywhere. This is where merlets nest. You know, they have a very restricted range. They're, they're gonna nest here or they're not gonna nest anywhere. And so I don't think it's radical at all. I'd much rather see a lot of merlets here than a lot of rats. Bringing the conflict to a head just prior to the application of the rodenticide, animal rights groups sought a court injunction alleging that the project had not complied with federal regulations. This delays the project for a month during a critical time. The project has been planned for not only a low point in the annual population cycle of the rats, but it's also an optimum time because most of the migratory species that would utilize Anacapa Island have moved on or haven't arrived for the winter. While the team waits on the island to proceed, a federal judge in Washington, D.C. reviews the case. It was really useful that there was a lot of experts from outside of our agency that were able to speak with knowledge that eradicating the rats was the best and most important action that we could take in order to protect those species, the, the native species on Anacapa Island. Since it is a first in the United States, it's under the microscope. In conversations with, uh, with the public and with uh, uh, other biologists who have had concerns about this eradication effort. I've oftentimes pointed out that 50 years from now, when you look at, at an island like Anacapa Island, I think it's gonna be overwhelming, that it'll be better with rats off the island than it will uh, with rats on it. We're all concerned that this action that we take not have negative long-term impacts on the island. And the courts concluded with us that indeed we have uh, looked very carefully and very critically at this project that we've proposed. And we were approved to move forward. Finally, after years of preparation, on a cool, clear December day, the bait is brought onto the island and the application takes place. Today with the helicopter we'll be working the cliff sides first, uh, completing the cliff sides, and then moving on to top of the island. The bait is loaded into a large dispenser to accurately broadcast the pellets using a specially designed deflector to minimize the spread of the bait into the marine environment. After each application, the crew reviews the pellet distribution via GPS mapping to ensure accuracy. So as he was coming in and landing to, re to reload some more bait, we took the data, plugged it into our computer, downloaded it, took a look to make sure that he had, had spread where he said he was spreading. Dive crews also monitor the shoreline 
while other team members make sure the bait is evenly distributed throughout the island. The operation was completed in a reasonable amount of time, within the time that we expected, uh, and safely. Nobody got hurt. Bait got on the ground, and the uh, job was done. I think we made conservation history today. In the days following the drop, crews apply additional bait by hand along cliffs and the shoreline taking extra precaution to get the pellets into the areas where rats are known to forage. The ledge is on the cliff, and we're using a slingshot to shoot these prepackaged bait bags with about 10 pellets each. Try to get up in the prime rat habitat. So 21, and then we'll go over to this plot here. For several weeks after the application, the team carefully monitors bait intake and the activity of radio-collared rats. Initial indications are that within seven to ten days, the rats have taken the bait and died in their burrows. Precautions are also in place to prevent any re-invasion of rats. We have a program in place to detect the presence of rats on East Anacapa, as well as preventing rats getting onto the vessels that frequent the island. The key to an introduction prevention is actually preventing rats from getting on board those vessels and getting out to the islands. Seven months after the application, the team is very encouraged by their findings. There is no signs of rats on East Anacapa. It's been wonderful. Um, what's really amazing is how the resource, the, na the natural resources on the island are responding. Cyblotch lizard is a native of, uh, on Anacapa Island. Since the eradication, the uh, Cyblotch lizards appear to be doing really, really well. We've seen a uh, significant increase in the overwinter survivorship of the juvenile Cyblotch lizards as compared to middle Anacapa Island where, uh, where the rats haven't been removed yet. So we're really excited about the results. So that's incredible information. Before that, we did not understand that rats were having that kind of impact on the native reptiles and amphibians on Anacapa Island. During the springtime, the captive deer mice are released back onto the island. Within months, they are reproducing and steadily moving back towards their original population levels. These are the first generation from the captive mice that were released back in April and they seem to be doing really well. I expect by, by August, the population should triple or even quadruple. Extensive testing has confirmed that the bait has decomposed with no residual impact in the marine environment. Unfortunately, six raptors and 41 songbirds were also poisoned as a result of the rodenticide, but these same species of birds have reappeared on the island and are thriving. As for the Xanthus merlet, researchers are finding intact eggs in areas that had a history of predation. This is nest number 256 in Refuge Cave, and it's probably the first indication that the rat eradication here at uh, Anacapa is having some positive effects for Xanthus merlets. This is the first intact whole egg we've had here in the three years of the project. And we're hoping that a second egg will be laid uh, shortly and we'll get a successful clutch for the first time out of this cave uh, since our studies have begun. This was probably the worst cave of all of them as far as rat depredation on merlet eggs. And seeing a whole egg in here makes me very optimistic about uh, the potential. There's always a few entrepreneurs in any species. There's always a few individuals who keep trying the impossible, just like humans, in a way. So there's always going to be a few birds that will come in and try to nest in a place where nesting might have been impossible for a hundred years. While it will take several years to evaluate the overall impact of the eradication on the island, 
the project is already proving to be an important success story in habitat restoration for the benefit of future generations. Restoration is, is sort of both an art and a science. We have to figure out what was injured, we have to figure out what we can do to help it, and we have to figure out uh, whether it's something that we can do without hurting something else. And this project is all of those things that we had to consider. The Anacob Island Restoration Project is going to set the stage for future restoration projects in showing that it's possible to think of innovative solutions to problems facing seabirds today and to have a tremendous impact. For me, the amazing thing about these eradications is that once you've done the removal, there's a tremendous amount of natural reparation to the ecosystem or natural restoration. It takes place without any input by people. That's why we're here. That's really why we're here. We're not here, we're not here to kill rats. We want to see the seabirds' numbers take off. We're here for the lizards. We're here for the mice. We're restoring balance. For copies of this program or more information, go to www.restoring-balance.org. Again, www.restoring-balance.org.